How does that look? I'm not saying that. <laughs> you get some sense that there's a handful of stocks. Look at that. I mean, you could tie that to the market. Bang. Hey, it's Guy. Welcome back to Commercial Break. I'm joined, as always, by Tim Seymour. Hope your travels are going well. Today, we're going to be talking about famous malfunctions. But before we get into that, Tim, why do you have boys to men behind you? I love that group, by the way. They, they, that's not boys to men, and it's obvious it's not boys to men. But I, I, look, I love me a boy band. I mean, in fact, I, I, you know, I think the folks watching Commercial Break love themselves a boy band, and they're, they're going to pick themselves up some uh, uh, new kids on the block gear in the, in the airport shops. Now, look, uh, this is, happens to be Justin Timberlake's. Get, what birthday do you think? If you're Justin Timberlake, how old are you right now? 37. Not bad. 42 uh, this week. And if you think about it, it's just yesterday that the guys at NSYNC were stealing the mantle from the Backstreet Boys, who stole the mantle from New Kids on the Block, who stole the mantle from uh, New Edition, who stole the mantle from the Jackson 5, who stole the mantle from the Monkees, who stole the mantle from, I mean, maybe even the Beatles. Well, wow. were they a boy band? I mean, if you think about it, uh, if they weren't teenagers, they were in. They were 20 or 21 when they when they when Beatlemania was taken by storm. I think you did a great job getting back. Listen, you want to throw the Everly Brothers in there. I mean, you know, if you, and then if you want to get into like you know the crooners of the 50s, like the Paul Ankas and that type of thing. I mean, I'll I mean I'll go way back with you. The Frank Sinatra, that, Ricky Nelson. Those were single dudes. I mean, I I think if you think about. Um, the 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 orchestration that is the boy band. And again, there, there was something there. It wasn't just that these were good looking young men who could sing and dance, which by the way, you know, if I could do this all over again, I, you know, I, I, I believe I, I missed my calling in a boy band, not, you know, and not patting myself on the back and look, I can dance and people don't know that. That's for another commercial break. And I love to sing. Um, but if you think about, look, um, Joe Jackson, and I don't mean, you know, Joe Jackson, I'm the man, look sharp, is she really going out with him? I don't mean shoeless Joe, but I mean the father of the Jackson 5. I mean, it's, it's well known that he put that group together. He told them how to dress. He told them how to act. He told them how to dance. It, it was all about that orchestration and, and so many bands that followed, the Osmond Brothers. And again, look, um, NKOTB, as much as, you, you know, it wasn't what I was listening to. I mean, those guys, those guys were one of the most successful bands of all time. So where would you put, like, the Oak Ridge Boys in, like, Alabama? Is, is that just, like, an offshoot of what you're talking about? I, I would put them in the Country Music Folk Music Hall of Fame, but I don't think they make it into this, into this conversation. No, I mean, we're talking about, like, first of all, think about Marky Mark. Think about Marky Mark and the, and the Fun Bunch or the Fun Bunch. Who, actually, the Fun Bunch... Was that was was the receivers? I believe for the Washington Redskins when they'd score a touchdown, they were like the first group celebration in the end zone. The fun bunch. I think Art Monk from, by the way, White Plains <laughs> High School. White Plains, nice. Might have been a part of that. But so let me ask you this question: So, so a group like Three Dog Night, do they make your boy bands, or is that not what I'm? Where talking are you about going here? with this? No, Three I Dog Night I'm make, just, make. I'm just curious. Look, they, they, make, they make the rounds for, for guys in the 70s that needed a haircut. No, we're, we're talking about um, bands that the whole was more than the sum of the parts. Nice. We're talking like about bands that. where image was everything. And, and, and again, look, Timberlake, by the way, I mean, he's one of these guys that, that as far as I'm concerned, I didn't really want to like Justin Timberlake when he was busting out. But when that dude went solo... And that sexy back thing came out. Um, I mean, I was ready. I was ready to fly with. Him. Plus, he loves country. He loves. He loves barbecue. Um, he's got a. Uh, he's got a barbecue chain. The guy's. You know, he's married to, to Jennifer Beals. Um, and uh, from Flashdance. No, that's. Yeah. No, on. I think actually no. But you're right. I mean, that's a great pull. Except it's Jessica Beals, by the way. <laughs> and if you if you really want to tie a ribbon on this whole thing, it's interesting. You mentioned the Jackson Five. And you mentioned Justin Timberlake. And then you mentioned Image. Well, his birthday was this week, as you mentioned. You know what else was this week? In 2004, that's when the wardrobe malfunction took Ooh. place at the Super Bowl. That was the Carolina Panthers against the New England Patriots. Janet Jackson and the aforementioned Interesting. JT. Yeah. So, so um, if, if you're performing at a halftime show at the Super Bowl... Do you want a wardrobe malfunction, or is that the worst thing that could happen to you? 
Wow. I mean, in retrospect, I mean, I'll ask you That's this great. question. A lot of people think that was planned. It was um, thought of pre-show and they had it all mapped out. It sort of, it sort of looked orchestrated to me. There are others that say it was exactly that, a malfunction. I will tell you that I think that took Justin Timberlake to the next level of his career. So whether planned or not, it was a brilliant strategy. Um, yeah, I mean, thank goodness there have been no wardrobe malfunctions on commercial break. I'm not quite sure they would be. Maybe the sleeves would fall off my shirt just so I could, you know, show the pipes. Um, if you think about companies out there, what companies out there basically are the modern equivalent of boy bands? And hear me out. It's it, companies that are all image. Again, companies that, that look, the products, eh, uh, it's all image. Who's out there? Well, I, th I think, listen, we talk about them all the time, but I think Apple's at the top of that list. But then you get into image companies, Nike. I mean, the swoosh is an iconic thing. So, you know, I can't speak to how well their sneakers are made or how much they help you on the hardwood surface. But Nike, I think, is as brand sensitive and is as, um, as respectful or I, I guess the word is um, protective of their image as any company out there. Image is everything. Just do it. Um, like, I think it's Lululemon. And I know you're not afraid to get yourself into a yoga pants or two. Uh, but Lululemon, look, let's be clear. You know, wearing Lululemon gear to the supermarket is all about image. And, and I'm sure it's well made. It's as well made as, as you know, my Adidas sweatpants. Um, but they're getting five times the price. So Lululemon. Um, and then in coffee land, I, like, I, I'm, I'm going into Starbucks and somehow I'm of the view that I'm getting myself a nice cup of coffee. I'm treating myself somehow something special, uh, even though, again, Starbucks probably is not doing anything more in coffee land than Maxwell House, Sanka. Actually, you know, Sanka is decaf, isn't it? Remember Sanka? I don't know, but, you know, I will tell you that as a youth, we used to get that instant coffee that you know, would come in sort of granular form and you would put it in hot water. Awful. Folgers. No, I'm just telling you, Folgers was fantastic. I'll still drop a Folgers in every once in a while. So, so look, guy, the, the best part of waking up is, is Folgers in your glass. Um, the best part cup. of walking around the airport. Cup. <laughs> the best part of cup. waking up is Folgers in your cup. You see what they did there? Because if they said glass, then it wouldn't make any sense. It, it doesn't make any sense. We're not making a lot of sense right now. But, but it, when I think about greatest boy bands of all time, and I think we, we, we don't have a lot of time left here, I'm, I'm going to actually go off the board with a One Direction. You don't even know who One Direction is, I bet. No, I love One Direction. They're my favorite band. You know, Sam <laughs> Jonas was in that before he went to the Jonas Brothers. They're great, One Direction. Sam Jonas. Yeah, we, we've got uh, uh, One Direction, nice use of the Jonas Brothers, um, maybe the Beatles. Folks, I think that the question really is, who is your favorite boy band of all time? And who do you think is the company uh, that is most image conscious and has created, uh, you know, created a story around the image of the brand that really is a lot better than the actual product. No, and it's, you know, what, what I find really fascinating about Instinct behind you is the fact that Kevin Bass had that storied major league career and then he want, went on to be a part of this iconic brand. It's amazing how he sort of turned the corner there. So, so, so Lance Bass, um, I think maybe more famous, didn't he go to the moon with the Russians? I think he paid. 25 million bucks or something to, to get a ride up there with Sputnik and be like, well, yeah, they were they, like, they were running rides up there. And if you've got that kind of loot and the boy bands do, you'd be going to the moon. But guy, it's time for us to, you know, get, get off to, on our, on our flight or, or travel off to some other land. It ain't going to be the moon, but it's going to be somewhere around 6 PM every day on reach TV. What are we doing? He's Tim Seymour. I'm Guy Adami, but we like to call ourselves Tim. Well, watch the wardrobe malfunctions, and until then, we are commercial break. See you soon.